Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Church, we're going to be getting into the Word of God. And once again, good to have everybody connected uh, with us. Now, during this week, we've gone through a time of turmoil. We've gone through a time of turmoil uh, in our nation. And uh, we're still experiencing um, some severe attacks uh, within our nation. But know that God is in control. I want to say it again. God is in control. We serve a good God. We serve a big God. And our God is in control of this nation. I want, I, I want you to know that. Now, as a church, we have been praying uh, this whole week. We've been fasting and uh, we had a, a, a five o'clock prayer meetings taking place. We've been fasting this week uh, uh, on, on, on Wednesday night when we prayed. You know, the Lord did such an awesome thing within our midst and through, throughout this nation. And I know that God is restoring and bringing back a calm. Now, it's not gonna happen overnight. It's not going to happen overnight. It's every day that we have to be persistent in prayer and every day we have to be consistent in our faith knowing God will lead us every day to do that which we need to do. And I know pe some people have uh, uh, suffered loss. People have suffered loss as far as uh, loved ones are concerned and suffered loss as far as property is concerned. And, um, but, you know, irrespective of what the devil has stolen, let me tell you, God will restore it back to you. Listen to what I'm saying. God is in control. You know, the Bible says in, uh, in the book of Isaiah chapter 59, and verse 19, it says there that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard. The Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. And you know what? The church is the standard. You are the standard. I am the standard. And if we can find but 10 righteous men, 100 righteous men, you know what? The nation will be protected and kept. And I know we've got enough righteous people within this nation that will protect this nation of South Africa. The church is the defense of the nation. Amen. The church is the protection of the nation. Amen. And just this last uh, a Tuesday, we had a meeting with the president, uh, with uh, some of the, the, the spiritual leaders of the, uh, the country. And we were able to spend a couple of hours with him. And, and uh, at this meeting, I really encouraged our president um, to really stay strong and to be courageous and know that as a family that we are praying for him. But at this time, that he be strong and strong in the Lord. We also uh, asked him for a, a, a national day of prayer. It's so important that we as the church pray and that he give us the, 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 uh, the, the, the leeway to be able to pray and, and, and together to be able to pray. And, uh, and that's what we, we are doing today. Um, today, we've got a national day of prayer. And uh, I just want to encourage you this afternoon at 5.30, 5.30, we're going to be live on TBN Africa. Uh, we're going to be live on uh, platforms, the same platforms, YouTube and, and, and Facebook. And uh, we're going to do a live a prayer meeting tonight. We've got national leaders, church leaders throughout the country. We've got a, a, a government leaders that will be with us. We've got a, a civil leaders that will be with us. And tonight we're going to pray. We're going to stand together and we're going to pray as a nation together. We're going to trust the Lord to, to, to move and work within our nation. Amen. Now we're going to get into the word of God. Hebrews chapter 6, we're looking at the elementary principles of Christ. And we looked at the uh, repentance from dead works. We looked at faith towards God. We looked at the doctrine of the baptisms. We looked at laying on of hands. And uh, last week, we looked at the resurrection, resurrection uh, of the dead. And remember, its foundation means that it is the underlying principles that determine our decision-making, the way we process, and through our decision-making, what we do. So foundation is critical. That's why Jesus Christ is the foundation. That's why these messages are so important. And last week, we looked at the resurrection of the dead. And you know, no one wants to talk about 
you know, being dead, right? What happens when we die? We don't want to think about it. We don't want to talk about it. But we saw Ecclesiastes 7 verse 2. It says that it's better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. Better to spend your time at funerals than at parties. He says, after all, everyone dies, so the living should take this to heart. Listen to verse 4. So that is Ecclesiastes 7 verse 2. Verse 4 says, a wise man thinks a lot about death. A wise man thinks a lot about death, but a fool thinks only about having a good time. You see, and that's what we looked at last week. Understanding the fact, we, we looked at Luke chapter 16, where we saw the, the, uh, the uh, 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 Lazarus and the, and the rich man, they, they passed away. It's not a, a parable, it's an actual event that took place. And we see that they ended up at Hades. And we looked at all of that and understanding that we are going to live after this life. In actual fact, the life that you now live is the seed that you sow for the life hereafter. Are you hearing me here today? Amen. The life that we live here today is the seed. Remember, we looked at the seed and the watermelon, right? So the seed determines then the greatest in eternity. In other words, forever and forever. And then also it's a different sphere of life. It determines our forever, how we live now. What are we doing now? We're sowing seed every day. You are sowing seed through your life. Now, I'm not going to preach that whole sermon again. But today, I want us to look at the last doctrine of the elementary principles of Christ. And that is eternal judgment. Last week, we looked at resurrection from the dead. And uh, today, we're going to be looking at eternal judgment, which also, once again, like last week's message, deals with the destiny, uh, our destiny in eternity, uh, where we step out of uh, the, 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 the sphere of time and, uh, and, and we, we step into eternity. And uh, Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3 says the following, Where the tree falls, there it shall lie. I say that again. Where the tree falls, there it shall lie. In other words, the condition you are in when you die is the condition that you'll have throughout eternity forever and forever. The condition, the condition in which you die determines your condition throughout eternity. That's eternal judgment. Now, let me tell you, it's a big subject in the Bible. Uh, but obviously, churches don't like, pre we don't like preaching about it. We all want uh, messages of encouragement. But you, but you see, this message, thinking about death, determines how you live. That's why the word says, Wise people think about death a lot. Why? Because in the thinking about death, it gives you a perspective of life and that determines then how we, how we live. So whether we like it or not, whether you like it or not, we have to face the reality of eternal judgment. Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. <laughs> okay, I see some of you a little bit worried, right? It's appointed for men to die once. Only going to die once. But after that, the Bible says the judgment. And we're going to look at the principles of God's judgment. And we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 2. You got your Bibles with you? Please open your Bibles. And we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 and verse 2. It says, But we know that the judgment of God is according to truth against those who practice such things. I, I want to look at the five principles of God's judgment. The first principle is judgment is according to truth. Judgment is according to truth. That is the first principle. God's judgment is based on truth. It's based on real facts, not hearsay. Look, most of our lives, the decisions that we make is based on 
hearsay, what we heard, somebody else heard, what somebody else heard, what somebody else said. I want you to know today that our judgment will not be based on fake news. Won't be fake news. So you can do your fake Instagram, your, your fake uh, uh, presentation of yourself, you know, because I, I've noticed that people spend more time to, to they spend more time looking good than being good. If you just took the same energy to work that you put in, the, the same effort you put in looking good, <laughs> the same effort that you're trying to show people how awesome you are and just be awesome. Are you hearing me out today? And God's not gonna judge you according to your Instagram post. He's gonna judge you according to who you are. That's number one. Number two, judgment is according to our deeds. And that's what we read in verse six. He says that he will, this is God, he will render each one according to his deeds. In other words, we will be judged on what we have done. He's talking to Christians. Believers. This is not unbelievers. It's the believers who will be judged. Now, Revelation tells us that in the final judgment that all people will be judged according to was, that, that was written in the books. You know, that's, that's what he explains. He says there's, there's like a, you know, uh, uh, there's like a book with everything we've done. God keeps record of our everyday life. But, you know, obviously we're living in a modern time. I don't think it's going to be actual books. Probably we understand now it's probably in the cloud. There you go. <laughs> it's probably a playback video. We see how easy it is to see everything today and playback. How do you think God does not have everything stored everywhere? If we know these big companies have all of our stuff stored everywhere, know exactly what you're doing. You hearing me here today? It's, it's, you, you leave a footprint. You leave a footprint here on this earth. Anyway, I'll come back to that. Let's look at point number three. So judgment then is also... Uh, shows no partiality. Judgment is with no respect of persons. And that's what we just read, right? There's no partiality with God's, Romans 2 verse 11. The original King James Version actually says there is no respect of persons with God. And that's a more accurate uh, uh, translation. Respect of persons means that we are not impressed by what people are in their natural selves in their fleshly selves. In other words, a person might be, you know, in the army, be a general, or you're a president, or you're a minister, um, you know, uh, maybe you're educated, maybe, or maybe you're a pastor, or you're a bishop. bishop. Um, you don't get special judgment on God based on your position. You see, you treat it like everybody else. No matter what position of power or prominence you occupy in the world system, we will all stand before God and we will ju be judged before God. Number four, judgment is according to the measure of light. Maybe use the word revelation. It's according to the measure of light or the measure of your knowledge or the measure of your understanding of the knowledge of the light. And, and we read that in Romans 2 and verse 12. It says, therefore, as many as have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned, listen to this, in the law, the Bible says you will be judged by the law. In other words, if you have the law, you'll be judged by it. If you do not have the law, you will not be judged by it, but you'll still be judged by what you have done based on what you know. Now, let me explain, because this is a rough one. So the more understanding you have, the more knowledge you have, and that's why I appreciate what we do here at 3C as we preach the truth. You can leave the church. You can go to other churches. You can stop going to church. One thing you can't do is unknow what you know. Listen to what I'm saying. You know, loving people, laying down your life, serving people, the principle that we have in, 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 
Loving God is loving people, sowing our lives. And that is the, you, you see, you can disagree with it and you can leave, but you can't undo the knowledge, which means one day you'll stand before God judged for what you do know. So you can leave the church. You can leave all churches. You can despise the word, but you'll still stand before God for what you do know. Are you hearing me? Eh? Let, let, let's look, Matthew chapter 11. And... Um, Jesus is speaking about some of the major cities. And um, in Matthew 11, verse 20, the Bible says he began to rebuke the cities, um, you know, which, where he had, you know, he, he did miracles in certain cities. Why? They, they didn't repent. So he said, to, uh, 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 he said to the one city, he said, woe to you, Cherizen. Woe to you, Bethsaida. He says, for if the mighty works which you had done if it was done in Tyre and Sidon, which were two other cities, he says they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. Now listen to this. He says, but I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon. In other words, it will be more tolerable, tolerable for those two cities than for Chesosin. It will be more tolerable in the day of judgment. Why? Because they had less light, they had less rev a, a revelation. Bethsaida and Cherizen had more revelation, they had more light, and therefore the Bible says they will be more severely judged. This is rough stuff. You see, we, we you and I, we're going to be judged according to the light. According to the revelation I have and the knowledge that I have, I'm going to be judged. According to that which you have, you're going to be a, a judge. And in a country where we have, we have masses of Bible, I think we've got more Bibles than people. Come on. We've got endless books, CDs, DVDs, and YouTube. We've got enough preachers. There's enough light to go around in this country. We've got enough light. And let me tell you, by that which is available to us, God will then judge us. See, God's standard of judgment for this generation, I believe, will be quite severe. Why? Because we have the exposure to the light. And here's the thing in South Africa. We have the freedom to live it. There's other countries that don't have the freedom. Let me tell you, we will be judged more. Why? Because of the freedom that we have to serve the Lord. But people choose not to connect. People choose not to participate. People choose not to be in church. Of course, when all hell breaks loose, like we've been experiencing in our country, you know, then, then people, well, the church, the church, the church. But you see, it's not about now. It's about when you die. You see, now is still uh, nothing compared to when you die. I heard one preacher say, he says, if you're not saved, don't die. <laughs> if you're not saved, don't die. You see, you're thinking about death? Don't die without Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, don't die. Don't die. Make sure you get connected to God. Let Jesus do the work within your life. And then as a Christian, make sure that you are living your life. If you've received Jesus Christ into your life, then we need to make sure that which we are doing has eternal value. That's powerful stuff. Now, number five. Judgment includes our secret thoughts and motives. No. <laughs> Some of you are going, no, Lord, no. Not the secrets, not the... You see, Romans 2, 16, it says, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men. What will God judge? He will judge the secrets of men. What will God judge? The secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to the gospel. God's not only going to judge your open acts. He's going to judge our secret, innermost thoughts, motives, and attitudes. You see, God's very concerned about the motives. He's very concerned about the why. 
It's huge. See, judgment is not just on what you do. It's why you do. Well, I went to church. Why? I preached the gospel. Why? See, the why, the agenda. You can have two people performing the same outward act, but their motives may be entirely different. When God judges them, He takes into account the motives. The motives. Now remember, we looked at 1 Peter 1.17, right? If you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, then He says, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. So note there that it says, and if you call on the Father. Okay, Father meaning that we are His children. So He's speaking to believers. He's speaking to believers. So, so we will be judged. Then we see 1 Peter 4 verse 17. It says, for the time has come for judgment to begin where? In the house of the Lord. Where must judgment begin? In the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. I'll ask that again. Where must judgment begin? In the, in the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. And then he says, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ? So judgment always begins in the house of the Lord and with the people that have the most truth. So when judgment starts, the first people then to be judged will be believers, will be, will be Christians. And thus we, thus we have that special judgment. Now, if you look at Romans chapter 14 and verse 10, I'm giving you enough scripture, you know, so that you, that you, that you can uh, uh, understand what we're talking about. He says, but why do you judge your brother? Why do you judge your brother? He says, why do you show contempt for your brother? He says, for we, now, we are Christians, right? He says, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Why do you judge your brother? Each and every one of us are going to give account of yourself to God. Of yourself. I said, of yourself. What did I say? Of yourself. There is only one person <laughs> you're going to give account for. That's your self. You're not going to give account for your spouse. You're not going to give account for your pastor. So why do we waste all of this time judging others where we should be judging ourselves? Therefore, judge yourself. The account of the account you're going to have to give is an account of yourself. And that's why 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, he says, for we, once again, all of us as Christian, we, we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may receive the things done in the body. Done where? In the body. In the body. Why are we alive? Done where? In the, in the body. Listen to this. According to what he has done, whether good or whether bad. You're hearing me here today. Listen to me. There's only two categories of deeds. I know, I know many of us, we like in between. There's only two categories, good or bad. Nothing in between. Everything that is not good is bad. <laughs> okay. What is bad? Well, everything that's not good. Jesus said clearly, he who is not with me is against me. Matthew 12 and 30. There's no neutrality. There's no neutrality. No sitting on the fence, this unwillingness to commit. Unwillingness to commit. Unwillingness to do nothing. Not doing good, but thinking you're not doing bad. See, not doing good means you're doing bad. So when the Holy Spirit, when you get saved and the Holy Spirit gets hold of you, He abolishes all neutrality. There is no, listen to me, there is no non-involvement with God. Let me say it again. There is no non-involvement with God. 
So what are you doing? How are you living your life? You can make excuses to you blue in the face. You can give excuses and whatever, your upbringing or your grandmother or your you not having parents or you not having grandparents. At the end of the day, with what you have, you will stand before God one day and you will have to give an account. So what did we look at? There were five categories. Number one, when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ, it is individual. Every one of us, you'll answer for yourself. Secondly, you'll answer for the things that you have done in this body. The way we have lived, what we've done, how we've spoken. Once again, only two categories, good or bad. 1 John 5, 17 says, all unrighteousness is sin. All unrighteousness. Anything that is not righteous is sinful. I'll say it again. Anything that's not righteous, there's no neutrality. Anything that is not righteous is sinful. Thirdly, there is no third category called neutrality. This category of neutrality seems to have slipped into people's thinking and and, 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 and deceives many people. But understand, with God, there's no neutral. Number four, this judgment, and I want to spend some time on this just to help you and maybe to calm your spirits. <laughs> okay. This judgment is not for condemnation. It's not for condemnation. You've got to understand this. We're going to be judged, but we're not going to be condemned if we are true, sincere believers in Christ. Amen. Are you hearing me? Now, I'll touch on that in a few moments. And then number five, the judgment is why? Is for the assessment of service. In other words, for what we have done. The work that we have done in the service of God. And some of you might be a little concerned about this judgment. Why? Because we, 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 we think of condemnation when we think of judgment. And there's three scriptures I want to just give you, and, and maybe that will just comfort you and encourage you, because I don't want anybody leaving here in condemnation. But I do want to ignite the fire of God within you out of this neutrality and get into a godly perspective an eternal perspective so that you can be a catalyst for change where you are. So John 3, 18 says, he who believes in him, that's Jesus, is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. If you're not in Christ, the Bible says you're condemned. If you're not a Christian, you're condemned already. If we are truly believers in Jesus, we will be judged. But understand that you will not be condemned. Jesus says again, and in the most emphatic way, in John 5, 24, he says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me, the Bible says, you shall have everlasting life and shall not come into judgment in, for condemnation right? Not for condemnation, but as passed from death to life. And then, of course, a scripture we all know very well. Romans 8 verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So we're not talking about judgment of condemnation, but we're talking about judgment that will assess what we've done, assess the service in in, 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 you know, we've offered to Jesus during our lifetime. Is this helping somebody? Yes. Is this helping you? Okay. So I, I want to close off. I want to close off. And I want to speak about the judgment assessment. And for that, we have to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the judgment assessment. And in verse 11, it says, For no other foundation can anyone lay that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, the foundation is Jesus, right? Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. What day? 
the day of judgment will declare your works. He says, because it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test each one's work. He's talking to Christians, talking to believers. What type of work it was. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burnt, he will suffer loss. But he himself, you will be saved, the Bible says, yet so as through fire. (laughs) I want to say by the skin of your teeth. Hallelujah. The NIV translation says, like one having escaped from the flames. You just made it out of hell. (laughs) Hallelujah. Amen. So what are we saying here? Well, firstly, we are saying when it comes to assessment, Jesus is the foundation. There's no other foundation. Your point of departure in your processing, your thoughts, your decisions needs to be Jesus. For your family, for your marriage, your finances, in everything you are, our ministry, our nation needs to be Jesus. We need to build on the foundation of Christ, not on our own works, our education, our thinking, our own righteousness, but on the foundation of Jesus Christ and His righteousness. It's not about you being right. Stop wanting to be right. Get into the Word. Let there be change and transformation in your life. And then secondly, when it comes to assessment, we speak about the value, the quality of what we have done. That will be assessed. And our works will fall into one of two categories. We've got the, the gold category, right? The gold, silver, precious stones. Then we've got the wood category, the hay, the stubble. And uh, the wood, hay, and stubble category, it can easily be burnt up because it will be tested with, with fire. And you know, you take the hay. It might look big, but when it's burnt, there's nothing left. And many of our lives, we can make, it, we can make our lives look awesome. Your marriage looks beautiful on Instagram. It looks like awesome. Your family looks awesome. Everything, it looks like you got it together. But you see, when the fire comes, will it last? Mm, No, when the fire, why? No eternal value. What is the foundation that you have built the works on? Then, of course, we get the gold, the silver, the precious stone. And that speaks about quality. Say me quality. quality. Speaks about quality and the ability to withstand the fire. And some people assess the quantity of their service, the quantity of what, they, of what they do. But what is God looking for? God is looking for the quality, the eternal value. And you know, within my life, it's something that I have learned from a young age. Is that when God's hand is on something, it is... Um, it is sustainable and it multiplies. When God's hand is on on something. So we're talking about your marriage, talking about your children. When I say um, sustainable, I mean mean, it means it lasts, lasts forever. So it comes to your your relationship with your children, comes to your relationships, you know, your your marriage, comes to, to your finances, comes to your business. When God's hands on something, a nation could be our our nation. When God's hands on something, it's sustainable and it grows. It multiplies. And the question is, in what you do every day, are you building for eternity? What you do, does it have eternal value? And I see many people, they, it's about the money, it's about, the cause, it's about how much I have, it's about the position, it's about what people think, what people say. But you see, when that is all tested with fire, there's nothing left there. When you die, you don't take one of your cars with you. (laughs) You don't take one of your homes with you. You definitely don't take one cent with you. Everything stays. So there is no eternal value in stuff. No eternal value. Even with knowledge. Some people have knowledge for the sake of knowledge and have knowledge for the sake of being right or have knowledge for the sake of looking good. That doesn't mean anything. 
having education for the sake of having education. No. Does it help in your eternal perspective and your eternal value? What are you doing? What are you building? That which you build, does it carry over into the next life? Does it carry over into eternity? Because that determines the way you think. That determines the way you act. That de determines what you do. So where is their eternal? Where would you find eternal value? Where would you find eternal value? Well, it's not in stuff. It's not in position. It's not in performance. Where is it? It's in people. It's in people. On this earth, the only thing that's going to live in forever is people. That's why the Father sent His only forgotten Son, Jesus, to come and die for people because there's eternal value. When you die, your body dies, but your soul and your spirit lives on. That's eternal. So what are you investing in? Are you investing in stuff? Or is the stuff just a tool to invest into people? That's why Matthew 5.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So, so the added stuff, that's not the goal. Our food, that which we eat, our health, you know, all the physical stuff. Look, at the end of the day, we all die. At the end of the day, we can't take our money with us. So that can't be the goal. You've got, to have, you've got to have eternal perspective. My question is, are you investing into people? You see, I examine myself in everything I am and everything I do. Am I producing wood, hay, stubble that will be burnt up? Or am I producing something of eternal value? What a tragedy to have worked your whole life and the fire sweep through it on the day of judgment, and there's nothing left but you as a naked soul that is spared like one escaping through the flames. Isn't that hectic? So let me close off. Sorry, I'm closing off again. Let me close off. So how do we withstand the fire? How do we withstand the fire? What do we need to do as far as our works are concerned? I'm, 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 I'm hastily finishing off. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Number one, motive. Say with me, motive. 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 So what's your motive in what you do? Is it God's glory? Are you doing everything to the glory of God? You know, a lot is done in the church these days, but it's done, people do things for their own glory. Leaders are driven by personal ambition, whether in government, whether in churches, uh, uh, you know, uh, in the workspace, driven by personal ambition. And, and, and the questions are, well, who has the biggest, who has the largest um, in church? Who has the largest church? Who has the most accurate doctrine? Who does the most miracles? Or in business? Or, uh, uh, you know, uh, as far as who's the most educated, who's the biggest. You see, that will all be burnt up. Why? Wrong motive. Wrong motive. So you can have the biggest church, but what was the motive? Paul says, do all to the glory of God. There is only one acceptable motive. Think for a moment. What is the motivation in everything that you do? Are you doing it for the glory of God? In Romans 12, verse 2, listen to this. It says that we need to renew our minds. See, the difference between a renewed mind and an unrenewed, uh, an unrenewed mind is extremely clear. The unrenewed mind says, what's in it for me? Well, now that I'm in government, now that I'm the CEO, now that I've been promoted, now that I have got my degree, now that I have, what is in it for me? Getting married, getting married to your spouse, right? What's in it for me? The renewed mind says, will God get the glory? It's a total change of motivation. You see, so whether in marriage, whether in business, are you thinking, what will I get out of this? 
Will it make me happy? I'm getting married for my happiness. I want to, for my happiness. Anyway, me, 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 me. I want me, me. Or are you asking, what can I give? That should be the question. What can I give in our nation and where we find ourselves? It's not what you can get. Not for yourself. What can I give? No agenda, but unconditionally giving ourselves to one another. When you get married, unconditionally loving your wife, loving your husband. Motivation is critical. The why, it's critical. What drives us, it's critical when it comes to withstanding the fire. Are our works fireproof? So number one, motive. Number two, obedience. Obedience. Our work will stand the test of fire. If our work is to stand the test of fire, we need to be obedient. And that's what Matthew 7 and verse 21 says. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, but he who does the will. He who does, does the will. He who what? Does, does the will. He who does. Does. does the will. He who does the will of the Father. So we need to do. We need to do that which God wants us to do. Not just hear His words, but do His words. Not just talk about loving people, but actually laying down our lives and loving people. And then lastly, if we talk about fireproof works, number one, motive. Secondly, obedience. And then lastly, I close off with this. We've got to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. Works done out of your own strength will not suffice. And that's why Romans chapter 15 and 18, he says, For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me. And sure, we can speak about things we've accomplished. Paul says, I refuse. He says, I refuse to speak about anything that Christ has not done in and through me. It looks like then some of us will be quiet all the time. <laughs> If we have to take this verse and apply it within our life, he says, in word and in deed. In other words, in what I say and in what I do. I'm not going to speak about anything if it's not motivated and done through Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to talk about it. Come on, somebody. So I want to encourage us that in the raising of your children, are you doing it through the power of the Holy Spirit? in the ability to love your wife the way she needs to be loved. Loving your husband the way he needs to be loved. Not what you can get out of it. Well, it's a 50-50, it's a uh, 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 you know, it's a 50-50 compromise. There's no such thing. That's not love. Love is a 100% of unconditionally giving yourself to someone else. Amen. So within your business, in your marriage, as far as your children, is that what we do? No agenda? See, you can't, you can't, it's impossible to live like that without the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to what I'm saying. We need God within our lives. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, being obedient to the Word of God, with a motive of doing that which God wants us to do to bring glory to God, what will you do? You'll build, you'll build things within this life that has eternal value. You see how important this is as foundation? That's why you're making such wrong decisions all the time. You're assessing in the flesh, but not according to the Spirit. And that's why we've got a lot of stuff. And when the fire comes, there's nothing left. There won't be anything left. We need God within our lives. That's why we need to understand eternal judgment. Now, I don't have time to finish everything. And maybe we'll look at it next week again. But just there we are. I wonder if you can close your eyes. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And maybe you've not yet given your life to Jesus. God loves you. He cares for you. But you know what? As I said before, if you, if you, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, you haven't been saved, don't die without God. Because there will be a judgment, the white throne judgment, which is not for believers. It's for people that don't know God. And I'm not going to speak about that today. But you see, that's where it starts. If you've not given your life to Jesus, that's where it starts. And maybe you feel, I need God within my life. Maybe you're backslidden and you want to come back to the Lord. If that's you, while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, I'm going to count to three. I want you to raise your hand and say, yes, Lord. One, two, three. Yes, Lord. I'm going to ask one more time. Because maybe you didn't respond. 
God is speaking to you right now, don't reject the voice of God. And you might feel uneasy in yourself. Yes, that's God that's challenging your heart. It's not Bert Pretorius. God is speaking to you. Don't reject the Lord today. I want to ask one more time. If you want to receive Jesus Christ, quickly raise your hand. One, two, three. Yes, Lord. Now I want to pray with you. And while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, I want everybody to pray with me and say this prayer with me. Say with me, dear Lord, I need you in my life. Please forgive my sins. Take out this old nature and place your spirit within me. Forgive my sin. Take away the shame. Take away the guilt and set me free, Lord. I trust you. I trust your word. It says, if I receive you and believe, I have the right to be called a child of God. And thank you, Lord. As from now, I belong to you and nothing can snatch me out of your hands. Lord, I pray for everybody who received you right now. Every power of the devil broken of their lives, every curse removed. Thank you, Lord. As from now, they belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. If you receive Jesus Christ, there's a link on our live link. Just go there, fill out your details, go to, or go to our website, my3c.tv. There's a commit button. Just fill in your details so that we can help you to grow in the Lord, which is so important. And church, I wonder if we can all stand to our feet. And um, I want to encourage you that, um, that, that, that God is in control, but we need to judge ourselves. And while every head is bowed, every eye is closed, become aware of the presence of God and let the Holy Spirit expose things in your heart where we've done things out of our own strength and maybe we've done so-called spiritual religious things or right things, but uh, we haven't done it uh, under the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask God to forgive forgive us. And then also check our motives, check our motives, where our motives have been impure, where we've done spiritual things, but we've done it for the wrong reason. We've done the right things for the wrong reason. For the wrong reason. We're going we're gonna to be looking at those things as well. Just ask the Lord, just to there where you are, just ask the Lord to forgive you, forgive you. And maybe you've been sitting around and you've been neutral, having excuses. Just there we are. Come on, let's pray together. And Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every one of us. We need you in our lives, Lord. Some of us, we've been operating in wrong motives. Some of us have been doing nothing, just having excuses and being neutral. Some of us have been doing things out of our own strength. Lord, we pray that you'll forgive us. We need you within our lives because we want to build that which has eternal value. And where our eyes have been down in the sand, Lord, and not focused on you, I pray, I pray, Lord, that you'll forgive us and that you'll help us. Lord, we can't do anything out of ourselves. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in everything that we are and do. And Lord, I pray that you will help us this week to be those who will be counted. Not being neutral, not sitting on the fence, but Lord, getting up to do that which you want us to do. And Lord, that we'll do it with a motive to bring glory to your name and that we'll do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. And just there we are, you lift up your hands and say, thank you, Lord, that you're in control of my life. You're in control of my future. You're in control of my family. You're in control of my business. Thank you, Lord, that you lead me and guide me in everything I am and do in Jesus' name. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Amen. Now, church, remember, we've got training on Tuesday. Destiny training and life class. If you're not in training, make sure you get connected to training. Thousands of people that are training can go to our website or give us a call. And then remember Wednesday. Wednesday, the whole Wednesday, every Wednesday till the end of this month, we are fasting on Wednesdays as a church family for our nation. And we're having, we live, live on TBN and on YouTube and on Impact Radio. We are live praying for our nation. We've also got a five o'clock prayer meeting on Wednesday. So we're fasting on Wednesdays, five o'clock prayer meeting on Wednesdays. And then the evening, we've got a prayer meeting that we are, that we are televising live where we'll be here in this place and we're praying. Make sure that you join us. And then remember our National Day of Prayer. This afternoon we'll be praying. Make sure that you connect. Make sure that you are with us uh, this afternoon at 5.30, right? What time? 5.30, okay? Join us, TBN Africa, our YouTube channel, our Facebook channel. Make sure that you are connecting and we're gonna have a time of prayer where we have national leaders together, civil leaders together, government leaders, and we're gonna be seeking the face of God.
And I want to uh, uh, let you go and speak God's blessing over you. Just lift up your hands. And Lord, I pray a blessing over each and every person as they go their different ways. You lead and guide them in everything that they are, everything that they do, your hand upon them, Lord. And I pray that, uh, that that which they need for this week, you'll provide the wisdom, the grace, the resources, the strength, the health. And Lord, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard their hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. And the joy of the Lord will be their strength. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Now church, next week we've got 3C Live, our own 3C Live that will be ministering to us. We love you. God bless you till we meet again. Bye-bye. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 112345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at P.O. Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word pray followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information.